Okay, so shortly after I uploaded the previous video, I had another request, which was to generate the same image, but this time around with motion offsets applied to each individual frame. In other words, a way in which to make it appear as though the comet, which has motion, was tracked to start with, and the stars would then have sort of a trailing effect to them. So with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and take another look at these images. The fortunate thing here is that I do not have to repeat all of the steps as I did before. I just have to go ahead and start off with the images having performed alignment. So here we have 111 images. And again, that's because each color channel has been separated into its own file. So at this point, again, we've gone through calibration. We've gone through deep layering as needed. Uh, we've done plate solving and we've done alignment. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you need to refer back to the previous video, uh, you can do so. But here we have, again, these 111 images. So I'm going to go to Action, View Images. And again, we have all the different color channels here. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and work with the blue channel. So Selection by Filter. And I'm going to say Select Images Having Filter B, uh, the, the blue channel. And what I need to do is go ahead and apply a motion offset. So I want to go to Ephemeris, attach from JPL Horizons. Lots of different ways to do this. The user guide has more detail as well, but this is just one example. So we want to look up the motion of our object. This is Comet 12P. So you can go to Asteroid or Comet Number uh, 12P. And I want to choose Ephemeris attached to data set. Now when I do that, it's going to say, well, there's actually multiple Comet 12P uh, depending on what epic year you want. So I, I choose 2023, select that record, and now it has attached that motion information to the data set. So as you can see here, uh, all of the images now have these columns uh, populated. So again, I just want to work first with the blue channel. So select B, uh, the blue channel, and I'm going to right click in the image viewer and choose the option create stack with ephemeris. So if you zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that the stars uh, have sort of this trailing effect to them. And the comet, which again has motion, is now, uh, that motion has been tracked, and therefore uh, the comet itself has less of an elongated shape to it. So this is indeed an improvement, uh, depending upon the effect that you're going for, but some would say that this is a desirable uh, improvement to have. So again, this is for the blue channel. So I need to go to File, Save as Fits Image. So I'm just saving one channel at a time. So you can change these settings if you want to, but uh, for our purposes, for astrophotography, it really doesn't matter what setting you choose here. So I click Save, and I want to choose an output folder and just give it a file name and click Save. So now I repeat the same process for the other two color channels. So here's the red channel. Right click, create stack with ephemeris, and same result. The stars look uh, like they have trailing motion. I give it a file name. And finally, we'll do the same for the green channel. Create an ephemeris stack and save that as well. So once we have our three different color channels that have been stacked individually, then we can proceed to import them. So I go to list, add images, choose the, choose the files there. And now I go to Action, View Images. And now what we can do is choose Auto RGB once more. So now it will create the stack of each color channel. And this should look familiar as before, where this might seem overexposed. Again, the solution to go to Settings, Display Stretch. And now you can choose how you want to adjust these sliders. So again, it looks a little bit too bright for my taste. So I want to dial that back a little bit here on the slider. And then I might want to adjust this one as well. And quite frankly, I think we can get a lot out of uh, the contrast adjustment here. So we can start to dial it in, but not too much. So again, uh, this actually looks pretty good because now uh, that the object, which has motion, has been tracked, uh, we, we have this improved detail of the, of the comet. So, Again, you can adjust these as desired, but uh, uh, as before, you can also 
save that result, save the entire field at 1x zoom, and then we can do a before and after.